Yo, 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 I can't keep saying yo more than enough. Are you sure that was enough? Nope. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Ma. Ma. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to Back to Classic, the cinematic movie podcast that takes you back to the iconic films of 20 years ago. Right here on the big three, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Spotify. I'm going to say iTunes twice. Ooh. Actually. Uh, of course, uh, I'm your guy, Jay Alonzo, with me, as always, he is... Danger Naff. David Danger Naff. How are you, partner? I'm good. Um, hanging in there. I think uh, this past weekend was a doozy. Um, <laughs> would you care to share? I would care. I, I wouldn't mind sharing. With you. Um, <laughs> certain stuff needs to not be said. No, nah, it's okay. We're going to make this a free-range episode. Nah, and, nah, and, nah. And we'll, whatever happens, happens. We'll, right? we'll leave certain <laughs> stuff to, to the imagination. But uh, over the weekend, um, uh, I did uh, uh, attend uh, King Corey, for those who are new to the show. Uh, th- those who, who, Corey, who Corey the, the fact checker. Corey the fact checker. Uh, my best friend, King Corey of OverTheTopLV.com. Uh, he had his uh, bachelor party on Saturday. That's awesome. And so uh, I was in t- I was in attendance there. And uh, needless to say, um, alcohol played a huge part. Did it? It it really did. Uh, <laughs> alcohol, spaghetti, and chicken wings. Oh, that actually. is that's highly specific. Very much so. That's probably the, the most specific I'm gonna go <laughs> uh, as to what all went down at the party. But had a fantastic time. Uh, had some friends there I, I haven't seen in a while. Uh, all in all, he was overly excited. Uh, the winning is next Saturday, so he's beyond happy to, to uh, be jumping the broom. So this Saturday? Uh, no, next Saturday, technically. Yeah, next Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you guys have the bachelor party two weeks. Two weeks, yeah, in, in advance. So, uh, so, uh, the next order business from here will be, uh, doing the meet and greet with the families and yeah. we'll do, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll do a rehearsal dinner and all that, but we had a blast, man. I mean, uh, I mean, it's like twelve days out or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but shout out to King Corey. And shout out to King Corey. If I don't, uh, if I don't get a chance to congratulate you, congratulate you, bro. It was, uh, it was awesome doing the show with you a couple times. He'll be down. Um, I, I know he will be, but still. Right. And and how was Is your it, weekend? Sir? Uh, you know, it's like one of my last weekends being free. <laughs> like before I go, like totally hacking on like this huge schedule and whatnot um yeah overall overall was cool you know yeah yeah oh yeah Yeah, i mean i mean it wasn't like it did anything like overly exciting like really i I really didn't like i just kind of hung out you know watch a couple movies watch this movie you know and Mm -hmm. just kind of chill uh uh the world is in a weird spot um like overall like you don't like 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 Saying that is almost like, yeah, we know. Yeah, because it was like 2017, 2018, you know, the world was like filled with like outrage. Outrage. Stuff, stuff and now, was happening. And now 2019, it's just sad. <laughs> like yeah. Everything, everything is just sad. And and we're like meant to like feel a certain way about it for briefly, if you will. Right. Um, now, uh, we're not a political show, so we're not going to go political. Well, for this next topic, we're going to have to. But uh, real quick. Fuck Jeffrey Epstein. May he burn in hell. Yeah. But that's just absolutely. me talking. Unless you feel the same. Oh, no. Absolutely. No. Awesome uh, sauce. The, the, guy, the, guy, the guy was a real piece of work. And <laughs> it was like, so to kind of touch on, on that topic just very briefly. Very briefly. Like, I really like the conspiracy theory theories out there because, first of all, Y'all don't understand. Y'all conspiracy theories are dangerous. Like, so... But some of them make so, some complete sense, though. Like, well, uh, you're right. That well, is hold, very true. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let's think, let's think about this in reality, right? He spends 13 months in jail, mm-hmm. uh, except he was able to go to his job six days a week and basically spent all day at his job. He only went back to jail to basically go to sleep. Now that was the first time he was arrested, right? Yeah, and right. like and like he got pretty much preferential treatment. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of things were kind of like thrown. He was about to like walk around naked and all that weird shit. Uh, yeah, it was, it was odd. so so, but that's what I'm saying. So he didn't get that jail experience. He mm-hmm. he he basically got okay. This is where you're sleeping at until you have to go to work tomorrow morning. Right. So that's not jail. <laughs> like that's you're spending the night in jail. A- you're you're you're. This is a slumber. This is a halfway house. For you, essentially, as a jail with bars. As if you have already done your time already. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so in my honest opinion, 
I think this was really the first time that like that like Epstein like realized that oh shit like, I'm in jail like I'm in jail jail now there's no <laughs> I'm in serious jail there, there, there's no getting out of this I need to do something and when he realized that the help wasn't going to come the way that was now of course did he have information probably oh yeah you know did is there is there going to be something on clinton is there going to be something on trump sure very likely who cares at this point because mm-hmm. honestly like like he is a piece of shit you know and uh, the world's a better place without him absolutely now i know uh, that sounds terrible for us to say but the world's a better place without him. i mean it really is like let's be real like dude, um, did you really lose sleep Knowing that Jeffrey Epstein is no longer on his planet. Right, exactly. Like, I know people want to, like, investigate the crap out of it, but... I really I, see him, you know... For what? Go to justice, you know? Well, okay, well, justice has been served because now I don't have to pay to keep him alive. Saving the taxpayer's money. Yay. Very true. Yay. That I will give you. <laughs> <laughs> that I will definitely, I definitely give you. I'm, I'm so... I'm cold-hearted. I don't even care. Seriously. Nah. Nah. Fuck it. It's not even worth, it's not even worth my time anymore. Anyways... So we are going to uh, move forward to, uh, for those of you who were This kind of ties in now I think about it. This first topic kind of does ties into that. A little bit. So, yeah, good. So um, this first topic is a little interesting, and, and I can tell you what I believe. I know what my position is. I'm almost certain that Jay has the same position. Mm-hmm. And uh, the movie The Hunt, which uh, I, don't, I don't really think it tied with somebody too big. Um, what's her name? The, the the girl the girl off Glow is in it. Yeah, and also uh, Ike Barinholtz in it. Okay, right. Mm-hmm. So so a couple a couple of decent names that are probably looking for their up up and comments basically. Mm-hmm. Um, the Hunt was a satirical movie, basically about you know hunting humans and you know stuff like that, concentration camps and stuff like that. Did you see the trailer? I did. And I don't know. I, I didn't think it looked that good. But. It was almost like this movie was plagued with controversy from Jump. Right. 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 But it's very satirical. Mm-hmm. Very satirical. And, uh, you know, uh, anyways, Universal came out. And, of course, because of the tragedy that happened uh, the week prior over in El Paso, Texas, and uh, Dayton, Ohio, mm-hmm. I, I almost said Toledo. I ain't going to lie. Oh. Darn you, darn you, darn you, Trump. Uh, <laughs> man. All right. That would have been so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so because of this, uh, Universal finally came out, and they decided to uh, – first it was pushed back. Mm-hmm. And then well, it was uh, – Well, suspend uh, promo. It was suspended, it. It yeah. was susp- suspended promo. Mm-hmm. But then they just decided to outright cancel it. Right. Part of the reason why – and, of course, yeah, the real reason why is because of money. But part of the reason why is because of how the outrage has really come out from automatic weapons and, you know, things like that. Um, and they decided to cancel it. Mm-hmm. And this is Universal's official statement on it. While Universal Pictures had already paused the marketing campaign for The Hunt after thoughtful consideration, the studio has decided to cancel our plans to release a film. We stand by our filmmakers and will continue to distribute films in partnership with bold and visionary creators like those associ- associated with the satirical social thriller. But we understand that now is not the right time to release this film. That doesn't necessarily mean that they won't consider releasing it at a future date. Mm-hmm. I really doubt that they do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's the bottom line problem with this. This is censorship. Straight up. At its finest. At, at, at its pure finest. The mm-hmm. idea is, is that is people are going to be outraged mainly because of what the topic of this is. And let's, and let's kind of, and let's call a spade a spade. This was really going to be affected to those who have been uh, victimized by gun violence. Right. And no doubt about it, I understand that entire point. But it's right. filmmakers, visionaries, content creators, podcasters, mm. things like that. I'm against censorship. I believe that there is no content out there that really isn't, that, that you can't really say is bad content. There's just content that's not marketable. I 100% agree. Um, my thought on this was when I first read it, obviously due to the uh, the shootings in El Paso and Dayton, I kind of figured that the movie like this would either be delayed for a little while, um, obviously to kind of let things kind of cool over. Because don't forget, 
Universal is the same studio that puts out the Purge, and the Purge is quite similar to you know the the, the satire that we're trying to figure out why we're not seeing it now. Like the Purge is literally about the government pinning poor people against each other for one night in a year, and whoever survives, you know, you, you work on to the next year. We have to do it again. So <clears throat> for me, uh, this movie, which I from what I from what I what I've read on it is heavily political as far as you know the, the 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 plot in this movie is supposed to be about rich wealthier people kidnapping you know um low class middle class people and and pretty much ha- and hunting them you know so my issue with them canceling it outright is that you can't say it's about the shootings when it's not it's really about you know really count your losses before you actually lost them so to speak now even with that, let's be real. Like we're now seeing censorship at its finest, right? And we and 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 while everybody wants to kind of blame the media for how things are being spun, we're not looking at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is you're not calling it for what it actually is. This is gun violence. This is people who have mental health issues. This is there is a terrorism in our country. For example, Walmart. Walmart decides to block violent video games but, but continue still. to sell the fucking guns exactly. that's used to kill people. Exactly. Look. Oh, it's ass backwards to me. <clears throat> if it's anything but guns, anything but guns, the conversation would have been different. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. If it was a stabbing spree, nobody would care. Right. And there was a stabbing spree in Norway. Right. Nobody cared. Right. Nobody, nobody blinked an eye or right. anything like that. And and that's my that's my number one biggest issue with it. Censorship in itself is I've never considered a good thing unless it is absolute it, unless it's promoting hateful bigotry, right? You know, or if it's if it's inciting violence, like that's where I have a major major issue with it. The reason why I don't necessarily have a problem with it is because satire in itself is an is an art form, right? Like. Kind of the entire point of this movie, if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be where the conservatives were the good guys and going after all these crazy liberals and all their crazy ideas and whatnot. Basically, yeah. Yeah, and and I'm cool with that. I lean left. I'm definitely not a liberal per se, but I definitely but I also lean left, and I'm okay saying that. You're um, hunting them for sport. Right. Mm-hmm. But we've had that sort of art. Wasn't there a movie that came out in the 90s that was like that? Um, it was something of game or something like that. Um, it was it was it it, it was basically the same exact thing. Okay. It came out in the nineteen in like nineteen ninety three, and and it, it's it's crap. Like like why are we why were we okay with this back in the nineties? But in twenty nineteen, all of a sudden, see, <laughs> I've been here for over a year now. Mm-hmm. I've been here for about eighteen months, and we've talked about previously about why outrage culture needs to end. And this is part of it. We can't be outraged with every single little thing that, that happens. But is it really outrage culture? Because we, we really kind of give us some thought. It's almost like they're trying to spin the agenda of, no, 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 guns aren't the issue. It's the video games that are the issue. It's the media that spins it the way it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's everything but the actual issue, which is, the guns, but I and while I agree with you, mm-hmm. absolutely, like like we're not targeting what the actual issue is anymore. But the thing is, is that outrage culture in itself or cancel culture is literally with everything. Right. You can't you can't say anything anymore. You can't have a solid opinion or thought or fact and think that's okay. Here's a perfect example: uh, Atlanta United, which is the uh, Major League Soccer franchise mm-hmm. in uh, Atlanta, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the reigning champions of Mm -hmm. MLS. The coach who has been coaching for a very long time was asked a question about, about gender pay, Mm -hmm. you know, and he just disagreed with the idea that it should be equal. The main, his main reason is simply an economic fact. If, if people are more willing to watch one certain product versus another, why should the pay be equal? Right. You know, and and as controversial as that sounds, and ironically, ironically, his topic would actually be more for 
more than likely the women would have to be game paid more since they're much more enjoyable to watch and a better product on the field than the men would actually be. Mm. Even though that's not what he's saying, that's how that would play itself out. But because of that, oh no, we got to cancel. We got to cancel. You know, just because he said <clears> something, we, we got to cancel. That's a problem. You're, 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 you're killing the bait and you're letting your emotions drive. That's the, the issue. exact issue because this movie, we, we, we haven't seen the hunt yet. So we don't know what exactly the narrative that's going to push, but at least giving us the opportunity to at least have the conversation mm-hmm. about fascists in America, about how, you know, the, the wealthy only care about the wealthy and then, you know, they leave the poor and, 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 and this franchise and, and the less fortunate slaughter each other. Right, like we need to have this conversation, and Universal making a move like this once again. Universal is also the same studio that put out that puts out the Purge, four or five of them at this point. Right, exactly. Which, which is practically this. It's it's same political satire spin to it. Right, exactly. The only difference is that it is is now all of a sudden everybody has a problem with it. Exactly. You know because it's it's happening in 2019. Oh, in 2018 the conversation was okay. No, no, no. Be consistent with your outrage. Just like canceling it chapter two because it was a fear of a mass clown right. murder spree. Right. You know, it's, it's, because because a theater is going to be filled with a whole bunch of clowns and you never know what's going to This happen. is art. This is merely art. And that's it. And we what need about, to have the conversation. What about uh, the posters with Chucky? You know, oh, well, he killed a... Uh, He's killing my childhood, literally, because he's, he because to bring yeah, attention... When, when they spoof Toy Story, right? Right. Mm-hmm. They're, they're spoofing all the Toy Story... And showing Chucky killing off the Toy Story characters. Uh, yeah, I totally grew up on Toy Story. Mm-hmm. I still thought that was brilliant. Right. You know, at least that got me somewhat excited. The movie was still crap, but right. who cares, right? right? They, you have to sell your movie somehow, but you have to sell it in a, in a, in a thoughtful way. And that's what people are going after. But people also need to understand that, that a sales tactic is still a sales tactic at the end of the day. Right. You know, I don't know. I, I don't this this reminds me a lot of um, remember when the interview was coming out, and then yeah. uh, the, the threat from uh, North Korea had kind of became this. So then, so then they canceled thing, it. So they canceled it, right? But then it went to Netflix, right? Uh, and before Netflix, it just became like uh, something you just stream online. Uh, I want to say it was uh, Sony had a certain player you could just stream from the website, and another. And then it went to Netflix. Then it went to Netflix, right? Right. So and overall, a decent movie. It was funny. Yeah, but it was, was it was it really worth all the trouble? Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's that's how people that's that's what people think. I now. feel like they just like they jumped the gun so quick without really giving us some real thought. Like you can't censor art. It's the same thing. It, it, it's it goes right back to that cancel outreach culture. Right. At the end of the day. I don't see the full benefit of it. I see more the benefit of having the conversation saying, we should probably not let this happen anymore. Right. Now, you know? and once, let me tell you, when I, when I saw that Walmart was canceling, or they were getting rid of the violent games, the violent gun oh, games, I, I was, I was but dying. keeping the guns. Right. Oh, well, this, this is for sport. What? what? <laughs> it makes you like, okay. Do you understand that this people... This is so ass backwards. Do you understand that people probably play more video games than they go hunting with you know <laughs> so what's left for to do go hunting right so if you want the, oh, oh okay well i can't play a violent video game anymore well i just need to kill something now well the the, the, Get, the quail the, hunting here the, i come the saddest thing about this whole situation is like whatever intent that you may have for doing what it is you're going to do unfortunately while it's sad and we fear what we feel for them el paso dayton is going to blow over like yeah. it always does, and and then when it happens again, it's going to be the same thing. Then who? Then what do you blame then? Right. So what? It, it goes what? Like thoughts and prayers. And thoughts and prayers. Face, Facebook. You know, we got to do something about this. Got to do something about. And this. then it just goes away. Like, but let's but let's it. blame media because right. media is the one who's spinning this into us a narrative that we don't want. Right. So exactly. okay, so you get rid of media, you get rid of art, you get rid of video games, and it happens again. What do you blame now? Oh well, you're you're gonna you're gonna blame uh, oh well the poverty. You know, and welfare benefits. That's, okay. That's, that's what it's going to be. Right. Mind you, welfare benefits has decreased poverty by 11% since 1967. But hey, mm-hmm. who wants to throw out that actual stat? Exactly. <laughs> but hey, hey, what, what, what do we know? We're, we're just a, cu- a couple of schlubs here. So let me ask you. So, so do you think we'll, will you, we will eventually see the hunt before, so. before year's end? I, I, mm, year's end? No. 
but I think summer it, it won't ever, it won't ever be released in theaters. Right. It will definitely go to some streaming like a site. VOD stream was that yeah. go to Vudu or it's gonna go. Maybe Netflix picks it up once they see. Hey, we did well with the interview. Yeah, but that's that was that was by pressure. Like you really didn't know what you had until you had it. But uh, I, 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 you know, honestly, um, I'm I'm in a position to where you know we have enough that we deal with as a country. Uh, we have this clown in office who's kind of just taking us for a ride at this point. But I kind of laugh at just how the movie industry has been in 2019. Like, like, and this has kind of also been a trend. Also, not not just with, not just with like, <laughs> like the whole. Oh well, there's another version of uh, of uh, Batman versus Superman, the Snyder cut, the Snyder cut, you yeah. know, or or, or, or we have this, yeah. or there there were extra scenes that were shot, in, uh, you know, all it's like it's like, dude, it's a who cares? Just give it to me, dude. Like like, well, well, we want the Snyder cut because Snyder cut's going to be so much. I don't care. Like like, the movie was not good at all. So <laughs> why do I want to waste, waste my time? That like movie industry is cracking me up. It's funny how like, like we're covering Universal and the movie that we're doing today is a Universal, Universal film. film. Um, now sp- speaking of Universal, which is nope, actually that doesn't relate at all. Um, the next topic we have coming up, uh, just kind of to lighten the mood now. Well, well to be but, fair, to be fair, uh, this actor's work used to be Paramount, and now it's. Usually Universal. Universal for the most part. Yeah, there you go. Paramount there, there, did him quite well for a little. And, and he's going back to Paramount for uh, the sequel. Right. Uh, now, if you don't know what the movie that we are talking about before we get to today's movie topic, um, Netflix, the, the the buddies of right Netflix, has uh, officially released a trailer for um, Dolomite Is My Name, which is going to be starring the king himself, Eddie Murphy. Uh, Mike Epps, T.I., Snoop Dogg, Chris Rock, Titus Burgess, um, King Michael Key, uh, Craig Robinson. The cast list is insane for this movie. Um, the movie itself is, uh, kind of, it's almost like the disaster artist. It's basically, it's a movie within a movie. It's right. the making of the character of Dolomite and the, the making of the first technically black exploitation film of its time. Um, I saw the trailer. I fucking loved it. I thought it was a great trailer. Um, as somebody who's been yearning for an Eddie Murphy raw R-rated comedy to come out, it 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 checks off all the boxes for me. Yeah, I mean, how long has it been since since we've had an actual R-rated uh, comedy with Eddie Murphy? Well, think about it. It's been five years since his last movie at all, which is Mr. Church. We we we'd like to forget about that, but and there's a lot of things we like to forget. About. Absolutely, but the last time our Last time Eddie Murphy said fuck in a movie, it has, it's had to have been since <sighs> Metro, probably. Has it been that long? It's probably been that long because since then we're, talk, we're talking about Haunted Mansion. We're talking Daddy right. Daycare. He went, right. he went the kid route. Yeah, he went the family wow. route, you know, which is fine. But it was just like, we need that raw Murphy back. So I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say his last already. Fl- no, here we go. Life. Life. Life, yeah. life was 99. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're right. The last time he actually, you know, went raw like that was life. So, you know, to get Eddie Murphy to play, you know, Rudy Ray Moore, and to have uh, Rudy Ray, you know, and and basically recreate the story of him creating Dolomite, it's great. It's fantastic, man. I, I think it's a great, awesome trailer. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, for what I also read that uh, we we spoke about <clears throat> a good while back. Was uh, this seventy million dollar price tag that Netflix threw at Eddie Murphy? This movie was a part of that deal, right? Of course, uh, you got this movie, and then uh, sometime next year we're getting this illustrious stand-up return. Which is, I'm not gonna listen. I'm looking forward to it. I'm beyond sure. looking forward to it. But Eddie was always you're bad at that. It's funny because Eddie was always a strange guy. Mm-hmm. Like he was a very strange celebrity in my eyes, and and they kind of showcase this a little bit. And uh, the the Jerry Seinfeld, you know, writing the cards with celebrities, which is fantastic. I love this interview. Yeah, no, the interview was great. It started off super slow, and you can right. really tell that like Eddie, Eddie is a little bit more reserved than how than how he used to be. But like as it really started to roll, he starts to get into it, and he starts to get into it a little bit. So 
So I do hold a little bit of reservations because mm-hmm. I, I, I'm curious if like if, if that's how it, it's going to be. But yeah, definitely excited. You know? I'm also very excited to know that this movie is getting some wicked Oscar talk now. Uh, though it hasn't officially dropped yet, but it did premiere. At, it's gonna it's going to premiere at a, at TIFF next month, and uh, apparently, uh, from people who've already seen it or or, or the word around town, anyway, that's the Toronto International Toronto Film International Film Festival. 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 Sorry for those who don't know. What TIFF <laughs> sorry, is. sorry. Uh, but, sorry, we talk about TIFFs and you know, cons and whatever, stuff like whatever. that all the time. That's what we do. Uh, have you have you checked out the latest on NYCC? Yeah, well, it was uh, great. I'm gonna have to ask the CC. I don't know how I feel all these about all, it. all these initials. <laughs> um, but no. LCC is right around the corner. <clears throat> but it's people who have uh, seen uh, who, who have seen this movie that are now betting their last on Murphy getting either uh, a nomination, securing a nomination, if not winning it. Well, I think I think I mean Murphy in my eyes at this point has at least earned the Cecil B. DeMille award. At least, yeah, right. So they'll get some form of nomination award or something like that but yeah i would like to see him win something i think it's gonna be tough you know especially with with like with like once upon a time in hollywood I mean, you know we're, we're not even nowhere near close to the oscar movies for the fall we still got right a lot of stuff coming for the fall i know uh now what i see could possibly happen is kind of like the mcconaissance once mcconaughey got uh dallas buyers club actually no mcconaughey was on this run of just Low budget, but hard hitting, powerful performances in these movies. Well, he had to change it up for he, sure. He had to, you know. So by the time he landed Dallas Buyers Club, you know, now the Oscars are coming. So mm-hmm. will it last? We hope. Because McConaughey, I feel like he's, he's definitely fitting into obscurity at this point. But. No, I don't know about that. Don't think so? No. Think about it. Because don't forget, when he got the Dallas Buyers Club, he was now on top. Sure. Right? Dallas Buyers Club to now the Beach Bum, which is what. <laughs> Five years later, right? But the Beach Bomb is still an actually pretty decent movie. Yeah, and to us, it's a decent movie, right? But to the common moviegoer, they're not going to go see that. But you know, White Boy Rick, which overall the movie wasn't good, right. mainly because of the lead, but he was excellent. In that mm-hmm. you know, so it, I think that's kind of tough to say. Like, like I think I don't really think McConaughey is looking for another franchise role because he's already he's actually kind of played a couple of legendary roles already. Mm-hmm. I mean, just think of him in Wolf of Wall Street, which was such a minimal role, but you can't you can't keep your eyes off of him, right? You know, so I don't know. Uh, in, in terms of Oscar talk for Eddie, I mean, I, I'm I'm definitely interested. You know, hopefully that actually spins and goes somewhere, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, it's too early to tell right now. And don't forget, we got coming to America or coming number so, two American. Oh, Wesley year. Snipes just got casted, right? Which is, uh, I'm I'm with that man. I I, lo- I love this that. resurgence of, of Wesley. I, I think it's pretty dope. Like he's not a good actor, Wesley. I've never considered him a good actor. Get out of here! Are you serious? Yeah, Wesley's a pretty good actor. Actually. Wesley's a good actor when it comes to like roles that require minimal lines. No, so now you're saying he's better at physical action. Yeah, he is. He's a lot better. Uh, at nah, uh, I, I, I name disagree. a good actual Wesley Snipes starring movie. Jungle Fever. Where Jungle Fever? How mm-hmm. old is that movie? Ninety f- fuck four. Okay, probably. Mm-hmm. After that, after that one night stand. That was him, uh, Robert De- Robert Downey Jr. I don't even know that movie. Mm-hmm. Check it out. I don't even know that many. Pretty strong, pretty strong performance for sure. Uh, the only one that I would consider a strong performance because it's such a goofy character is, of course, New Jack City. Oh, that's that's the iconic performance. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's why I mean, like, that's how I see Wesley. Uh-huh. I've never considered a Wesley like like when I think of like great acting performances by black actors, Wesley's usually not even in my top ten. That's wild. That so, is. Wild. I'm serious. That's wild. I don't even think he's in my top ten. Denzel's number one for sure. That's wild. Of course. Denzel. Will Smith is in my top five for sure. Off the top of my head. Whitaker is in there as well. Yeah. I okay. And the crazy thing the craziest thing is I could say the same thing. I won't put Wesley in my top ten, but the man can act though. I, I the man can't act. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh but the Don't Mind is my name does drop in September. Uh officially I won't no, I'm sorry. It, it drops uh October 25th is the official release date for Netflix. Actually. Is that going to be enough time for Oscars? Oh, yeah. That's When's peak. the cutoff? 
Because uh, there's usually a cutoff in like October, I thought. Or is it November now? I think it's December because Just Mercy, the Michael B. Jordan, right, Jimmy right, Fox movie, right. just got pushed to Christmas right, right. to make Oscars. So, right. okay. Who knows? Anyway. All right. So, let's jump into this Let's movie. get into this thing, man. So, uh, today's movie, uh, we did mention last week. I know I almost kind of let, let it count the bag. If you were listening to Tough, you probably already heard it. But it doesn't matter. We are here for the next one. Uh, we are taking it back to 1999. Uh, with the comedy classic, and I do say this move, I say this word with pride. This movie is a classic. Uh, Bowfinger, mm-hmm. original release date August thirteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Shares opening the weekend with Broke Down Palace and Detroit Rock City, both pretty good films actually. Right. Uh, production budget fifty five million with a box office total of ninety eight point six million. Currently sitting at an eighty one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's, that is very fair. That is so fair. Like man. That- Here's the thing about this movie. What what this movie is really great at is that it kind of it kind of talks about the the ridiculousness of of B rated movies, but at the same time, like the ridiculousness of how to shoot a B rated movie. Um, this movie stars uh, Steve Martin um, and Eddie Murphy, and, and this was kind of a big thing. It's also directed by Frank Oz. For those of you who don't know who Frank Oz is, have you ever seen the Muppets? He's pretty much played every one of them except for Kermit. Yeah. I'm, and have you seen Sesame Street? He's the cookie monster. He is the little cookie monster. But for those Star Wars fans, if you don't know who this guy is, then you really should be sitting in a corner right now and, and crying because this is Yoda. Yep. Frank Oz is Yoda. Mm-hmm. And he's always done kind of these kind of quirky, weird comedies. Uh, what about Bob is the first one that comes off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. And that movie is just so classic because it's like it's Bill Murray, in my opinion, at like one of his best points because he's just carrying this movie and, and Dreyfus is just going insane right. like throughout this movie. And it's 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 in my eyes it's really fantastic. But right. this movie kicks off basically in the living room of the title character Bowfinger. Bobby Bowfinger. Bobby Bowfinger, who is a failed director uh as he is as he's reading over a script uh to uh the movie Chubby Rain who is written by his uh sometimes a receptionist accountant and uh and uh now screenwriter um what's his, what's his name uh i want to say some boo i could be, i definitely get me wrong his name is Afram 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 right and uh he thinks that the script is just fantastic and Steve Martin really puts like like kind of his imprint on this movie really great because you really quickly realize that that Bowfinger knows how to sell like a madman. He knows how to sell shit, but he can sell it very well. But though. that's what I mean. Like like you give him a pile <clears> of shit, <throat> and not only does he know how to sell it, but he knows how to toy with everybody's emotions in it. Right. And a perfect example of this is that he he basically calls everybody. That, you know, they were threatening to leave him because he hasn't had work in eight months or so to to basically come together for this movie. And he pitches a lie. And the lie is, is that basically that he was able to get a major producer attached to this already. He said he was going to have this meeting. The reality is the meeting hasn't hasn't fucking happened. Like like it hasn't it hasn't gone through yet. Right. So he's still just like pitching this lie. So he then goes and and he goes to this restaurant that, you know, is his partner in crime uh, pretty much knows everything that's going on around Hollywood. Now, real quick, as as Steve Martin is, sorry, as, as Bullfinger is reading the script, I also love throughout the movie that uh, that line, that final line in the script is, the gotcha suckers. Right. That's, that's continuously being referenced in this movie up until the last scene in the movie where, he, where uh, Ed Murphy actually says the line, right? Yeah. And the, and it, it it reminds you that that the script is probably shit. Oh, but you're is. trying to get to that last scene, right? Because you need the I, you need the iconic moment, right? Mm-hmm. So he walks into this restaurant <laughs> with a cut off cordless car phone, and I do mean <laughs> that because you could see the cord dangling, not attached to anything, right? And he's trying to speak. Uh, uh, he he he's basically holding this conversation. And letting somebody over here who is uh, who's uh, Robert Downey Jr. Jerry Renfro. Jerry Renfro, who is going to be the major executive producer. Such as Hollywood name. And and I mean, he is just he is like kind of talking up this game. He's like, well, yeah. I mean, if I can go ahead and get 
uh, uh, Kit Ramsey, you know, uh, in this film. I mean, I mean, you just let me know when Kit Ramsey is and, and uh, where he is. I just need to find him. He's supposed to be on set, you know, whatever. Um, but we need to get this movie made, you know, and <laughs> and so and so like like Robert Downey Jr. is just like in love with this conversation that's basically happening. And uh, and he's like, hey, here's a script, you know. And he shows like the first page, and apparently it was decent dialogue within the first page. And then he basically flips to the last page, and he's all like, "Think of the moment, Kit Ramsey, up up on top of the uh, of the audit uh, of the uh, uh, observatory in L.A., screaming to the aliens, gotcha, sucker." And he's all like, "I'm I'm like transcended. I like, just saw, I, can totally I, I just, I just saw the poster. I, I just saw I just saw the billboard. I saw the poster. You know, right there. <laughs> and so and so he said, if you can get if you can get this script, if you can get this movie set, and you can get Kit Ramsey, you got then, the then you got the movie. And then we get the introduction to Eddie Murphy's character, Kit Ramsey, who has probably the most insane but amazing introduction scene for a person that it just it really feels like he's just spitballing. Now this is like Eddie at its his peak. I'm talking about he's walking out and he's going. He's talking about he wants his hostel of Vista, baby. He wants his, you know, if Stallone has one, if Jackie Chan has one, if Schwarzenegger has one, he wants his hostel of Vista, baby. Right. He want he wants his Oscar, yeah. basically. Right. You know, he he want he wants his his award, and and he goes and, and he's just he's spitballing here. He goes, he goes, I see what you I see what you Hollywood elites are trying to do. You know, I counted how many K's are in this script. There's like 1,814. 1, and, and that's perfectly <laughs> visible by three. He's all like, he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I see. I, and like his boy is all like, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, but, 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 but what are you talking about? And he's all like, he's all like, that means KKK is in here 485 times. The entire room goes silent and looks dead at the, at the guy. And everybody is black in the room outside of the white agent that's in there. And it was just like this insane conspiracy theory that he had <laughs> that just it had me dying. And so, but but he has another great line that kind of goes uh, that kind of goes by. Don't tell me that. Uh, don't tell me that uh, there's not a brain chip inside Latoya Jackson's uh, mouth and may say those words. And you cannot tell me that Ted Kennedy is not one sixteenth black. Is that like <laughs> Ted, that Kennedy. Like Ted Kennedy? <laughs> Look he's at not, him. He's not like the other Kennedys. Look at he's, him. Look he's at him. Different. different. <laughs> that was a great scene. That, that had to be an improv scene. That had to be an improv scene. It's too good. Then look at him. He's different. <laughs> look at him. He's different. <laughs> so, uh, as uh, Bowfinger pulls up to uh, what is apparently supposed to be Ramsey's uh, place, sneaks in. You do hear like some gunshots, oh, and yeah. you see the uh, the agent take the fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, so, but the gunshots were at this drum set that he like shoots three times mm-hmm. into, and he shoots only the cymbals in, and the agent is just flying off. He finds a way to get inside, where Ramsey is actually about to go to a therapy appointment held uh, held at at this place called Mind Mind Head, Head which, which like is Hollywood. Shit. It's just basically it's you, and and they kind of make the joke at the end of the movie. It's you should you might as well just call it Mind Fuck. You know, because the right. entire idea of this place is like, it's kind of cultish. Like, mm-hmm. like when you first get the entrance of this, it's all like, in different, to mine head. and it's in different tones. It's all like, welcome, welcome to, to mine head. head. Welcome, welcome to mine head. To mine head. Welcome. Welcome to mine, to mine head. head. Like, what is this <laughs> evil ass shit I'm at right now? There's nothing else that say. Normally, when you would hear this in <clears throat> movies, there's like something else that's said after uh, said afterwards, like reception hours are open from three to seven. Or, no, it's know, welcome. No, no, it's it's just the repeated phrase. Welcome to, to mine head. <laughs> now, okay, so so even <laughs> so while we're at mine head, and don't forget uh, Steve Martin. Now, the funny when he actually gets with Eddie Murphy, and he, he kind of kind of gets into the movie a little bit. He he's talking about Minehead, right? And that's where you know he fucked up because right. Eddie's character is very devoted to this Minehead thing. Right. So I I and I love this line. He goes, you know what? I gotta go. I, I gotta get to get to my uh, my, my Minehead meeting anyway. He goes, Minehead, he goes, Minehead? Yeah, yeah, Minehead, you know. <laughs> who's your guy? Ray Shred, who's yours? No, no, uh, Terry Shred, who's yours? Ray! <laughs> <laughs> 
love that line. Like, Ray, dude, I would have tried to play that shit up as best as I could. Ray Jackson or some shit. Like, Terry should do his yours. Ray! Ray. <laughs> so funny. So anyway, so so he kicks him out and he goes, people like you, they give my head a bad name, you lying piece of shit. And best we get this weird intro to my head. Now, what better person to run something like in my head than Terrence Stamp and all his weird creepiness? Well, they kind of, you know, it's it's funny because remember Yes Man? Uh-huh. Okay, well, he was also the head of that, like, weird book to, like, say yes to everything. Right. You know, and supposed to be, like, some spiritual stuff. And you're absolutely right. This is Zod we're talking about here. Right. Of course he's going to be able to convert hundreds of thousands of celebrities to basically follow into his weird cult-like therapy sessions that he's got going on here. <laughs> right. So, so Bowfinger gets kicked out, but Bowfinger sells this perfectly because he comes back to the place where basically everybody's just kind of waiting, right. you know, for the news. And, and what he does is that he goes and he just, he, he walks in and he just bypasses everybody. Everybody's like waiting for the news. And that's what I'm talking about with the whole selling point. Like you're plugged into what he's going to say because you as the audience are like, okay, he, what he, he's lies about lie. is it going to be about to lie, right? Quick to the drill question. What is Eddie Murphy's problem at mind? Uh, he keeps uh, showing his uh, Mr. Weenie to the Laker girls. <laughs> and, what is, and, what, and, what, and, and, and he's basically schizophrenic. Right. And, and what is the uh, – uh, uh, the course of action that Terry suggests uh, for him to do. Keep it together, obviously. <laughs> keep, it, it kit, together. Kit, keep it together. Keep it together. <laughs> keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. But but then he's all like, <clears throat> but then he's all like, and what are we not going to do? Oh, come on, man. You know I got to show it. He's like, we don't show <laughs> we keep Mr. Weenie, Weenie to the, the Lakers. <laughs> keep Mr. Weenie. <laughs> and I love this. The callback to that joke way later on, which is, I mean, it cracks me up. Anyway, so at this point, so he lies straight up. But they need to get, they need to put the cast all together. Uh, Dave, uh, who's played by Jamie Kennedy, mm-hmm. uh, is supposed to be kind of the pseudo, he's supposed to basically be the bad guy in the film. They need a leading girl. And here comes Heather Graham. Who is the biggest slut in this movie? <laughs> but she is amazing at the same time mm-hmm. because she sells it so well, and that's kind of like the play a little bit, a little bit on her, uh, on her because her character is basically a jab at uh, Anne Bancroft, yeah, who was kind of known in the Hollywood in Hollywood as kind of being the biggest slut who always tried to find a way to basically fuck her way to the top. Until at the end of the movie, until at the end when she winds up being with the with the top lesbian in, in, in all of Hollywood, right? And that's a real person mm-hmm. that's here. So I don't know. I, I just thought she was funny, but but she comes in, she delivers a line, uh, she delivers a line, and they come in for this passionate kiss. I mean, it's the longest kiss in the world. Like you're sitting there, and it's a good, it's like forty five seconds. Before you finally, before uh, uh, Bowfinger's like, okay, yeah, that was good. Uh, let's go ahead and do it again. Dave, hold the erection, please. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one thing about um, the genius of what Bowfinger was able to put together. Because before we even get to the geeky Eddie Murphy character, they make Kit Ramsey believe that he's, that he's involved in some sort of an alien invasion. And he's like the key target of who they're trying to grab, right? So they have him. So uh, I believe the, the setup line was, uh, "How how do we how do you feel about a movie that you that you don't know you're in or something like that?" And like, well, fine, we'll just shoot around him, right? You know, you know. It, like, did you know that? Uh, did you know that Tom Cruise didn't realize he was in, in that vampire movie until, 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 like, that he wasn't in that, until like two years later. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> he, he, said that like that then? At, he said that at the end of the movie, and it's fantastic. But he actually says a line. So to fund this movie, because there's obviously no money in there, he would apparently had been saving a dollar ever since he was 10 years old, right? Do you remember the dollar amount they had? $2,184. Okay. Let's do the math on that real quick. Mm-hmm. Because if you remember earlier in, uh, earlier in that scene, he said, nobody hires you when you're 50. You could be 49 and still be okay, even 48. I could probably pass off as a 38 on a good day. 
you know, but the minute I hit 50, like everybody can smell it and nobody wants to hire you once you're 50. $2,184 after 10 years, a dollar a week every single day, he would be 52, which is why he hasn't been getting work at all. Wow. <laughs> so he's been lying about his age. Of course he's lying about his age. Why wouldn't he be lying about his yeah, age? Yeah, he's, he's bolting. <laughs> but anyway, so, so, so Eddie's, so Kit's, is really in this paranoid. super mental paranoid state now to the point where mind head just makes him disappear basically for a little while. Right. So to kind of make up for him not being now, there. Now, but there's another thing with this. He 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 talks about how Ramsey is such a how Kit Ramsey is such a method actor mm -hmm. that the actors cannot actually come up and approach him and speak with him. You know, because he's going to think that, that, you know, something's off and he doesn't want to break character. That's how I'm best into the role right. that he actually is. And it actually comes out with some genuinely funny stuff because everybody thinks he's acting. It's his real fucking reactions, right. which is why it's so good. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so they keep walking up to him and one of them that, that really stands, uh, stands out is like the first scene where they're at, um, that restaurant starts with not. I want to say uh, that. Uh, and that's a real place in LA too. Right? You're right. I'm trying to think what it's called. It's fine. So, so they go to this restaurant, and they kind of have it where somebody's kind of sneaking in a microphone, so you can kind of hear. And they of course get the perfect angle and the perfect shot. And she's supposed to go and dump this, dump this water on him, and of course it misses him. But he goes through. She goes through this whole thing, you know, and he's just like, what? He's just like, what's like going on? But keeps talking about like aliens. Unfortunately, because he's so paranoid, he's believing her shit throughout uh, throughout this film, and it's just so fucking funny because he's he's he feels like he's actually going insane and keeps going back to uh, mind mind it every single time uh, that he is. He's like genuinely being stalked by aliens, and and it's like a really intense performance every single time that he does. Um, it does actually lead him. It does kind of backfire on him, though, because he keeps because he actually goes into hiding at Mindhead. Right. And so they kind of need to start finishing the movies. And that's when we get the introduction to Jif. So we, we get the introduction to uh, to Jif. And um, upon first glance, Jif is literally the nerdy version of Kit. Uh, no, no matter how you read him, he's right. That's the nerdy version of Kit. The fact is, he looks just like Kit. Does kind of you know spin your curiosity? Like, oh, okay. Well, he's not and I mean, he is an exact lookalike because it's obviously played by Eddie Murphy. Played by Eddie Murphy. So uh, now, what what it is that you know, Jif is literally the complete opposite of who, of who Kid is. Lovable, amiable, yeah, but clueless. Like, like he is. He he's one of the biggest idiots out there. But you know? um, because he, not only is he the star of this film, but he's also the errand boy. <laughs> the errand boy. He's, 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 he loves to get coffee. You know? He loves to. He, he, I just can't handle this man. I just really want to do errands. <laughs> so so Jif's first uh, scene is the now uh, probably one of the most famous scenes in this movie. And it's, it is the most famous. And movie. then and you get uh, this view of Jif. Cutting across what I'm going to say is probably the 10 freeway in it LA. De it definitely looks like the 10. So I'm going to assume it's the 10 freeway and he's literally cutting across. Now, if you live in LA or you've even been to LA, been on this freeway, the 10 freeway is at least 10 lanes, five on each side. So <laughs> the fact so, that he pulls it off twice. So, so, but hold on. We got to paint this a little bit. All right, go ahead. So, so Bowfinger comes up and he's all like, he's all like, yeah, we just hired a whole bunch of stunt drivers. To make this look and absolutely he real, he, uh, of course he's bullshit. absolutely he absolutely is a bullshit, right? <laughs> like, what? No. And you get this scene. The very next uh, shot is you see him up against the wall, and he looks fucking frightened. petrified. He's frightened. I mean, he he looks like he's about to piss himself. Right? <laughs> and they're all like, "Action, action!" They're like trying to drive come him on, over. Come you know? on. No, keep in mind he's supposed to look like the hero and in all of this. Scared shitless. I mean, I mean, I'm surprised he didn't start crawling. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> but 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 as he as he cuts across the freeway and finally gets across the freeway, and then and they love it. Oh, good job! Da, da, da. And then uh, he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I just, I just want to do errands. Da, da, da. 
I want to go I want to get the whole get the whole crew right. coffee. The, all of the stunt all of the stunt drivers loved what you did. You talk to nobody. <laughs> and he goes, All right, so let's do it one more time. Heavenly God, heavenly God, heavenly God. <laughs> I love that. That's a great scene. That is an awesome, awesome scene. <laughs> uh now to speak on Jiff a little bit, because uh we didn't mention that, you know, Bullfinger does hire a crew of, of undocumented Mexican men. So oh, kind of and it's crew. so it's so fantastic because he ba- there's basically shots from the U.S. Border Patrol, mm. and like and like Steve Martin just like opens up like, like hey, America. America, come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> This is America. And all of a sudden, these guys, these guys, you know, they they don't they don't know what's going on. They just got introduced to America, and now they're on some movie set, you know. Doing, but, doing but, whatever. But you, you realize that later on in the movie, though, they're not like almost like film aficionados, like oh, talking yeah. about like Apocalypse Now and shit. Oh, yeah. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, because they're all like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I really like Apocalypse Now and The Godfather. And, you know, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, have you seen these? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, now things do get kind of, kind of, kind of odd because also another great scene is when um, uh, Jeff gets to see uh, Heather Graham's boobs. Oh, man. And. I, that's all improv. That has to be all improv. <laughs> it is the the scene, the lines definitely were, were all improv, and the entire point is that it, it's pretty clear that Jif probably doesn't get the ladies like at all. And it's funny because when they were asking like his experience, oh, do you do you have any movie experiences? So like, he's like, yeah, like uh, I'm a frequent, I, I'm a frequent, <laughs> frequent at Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I often went from Vargas. Uh, I usually go to that film festival, the one that happens once a year. Oh, man. <laughs> and and uh, so, of course, he probably has never seen a woman naked. Like, yeah. All. Now, you got to give credit or credit to Murphy literally plays these two characters, but they're so unbelievably different from each other. Mm hmm. It's almost like they're two different people. Like, it's even a different speech with Jeff because yeah. it is so unconfident and white. And geeky and, and geeky. nerdy. Oh, and, man. Oh. But it was fantastic because he's just like, oh, man. Yeah, this is great. This is awesome. This is awesome. You're going to be a star. <laughs> it's, just, it's such a geek. <laughs> uh, now, uh, eventually, uh, as production is kind of going on, um, we actually find out that Jeff Jif is the actual Kit Ramsey's brother, brother of, of Kit Ramsey. Right. Which leaves the entire um, uh, crew going, huh. Right. How do you talk to your brother? Uh, we don't talk at all. You know, which, which, which I thought took a, a, a dope turn. Because, like, all right, so this is more, this, this could go a family route. Like, you haven't right. talked to your brother in some time, haven't you? Right. You know, because obviously he didn't even make the mention, like, that he was even Kit's brother. He's like, oh, I'm just. I look like Kate Ramsey. Right. But he's like, oh, well, he, he, is my well, he is my brother. I mean, I just find it so weird. He's like my brother and all. It's like, what? <laughs> Since when? Um, so with this new knowledge, they find out where Kit, where Kit Ramsey finally coming out of hiding is actually going to be at. Mm-hmm. And uh, they decide to start doing this final scene. There were there were a lot of really great scenes that they were shooting. One of them I really loved was the, the parking lot scene. Mm-hmm. Where they just had the dog in high heels, like like do come and go, and so you're kind of hearing like the sounds of high footsteps coming in, and it sounds like so. It was genius. Crazy. Yeah, it was. It was actually genius. But the final scene is being shot at this observatory, and it, and and it's so zany. Not just at any observatory. Oh, it's that, the LA that is the Griffin Observatory. Yeah, it's the Griffin Observatory. I love that place. Um, and they were pleased with Ramsey's unscripted dialogue. You know, and it's like this crazy shot where, you know, Ramsey is like finally, finally like, yeah, there's aliens. Yeah. You know, like he's he, at this point, he's going full on like, like, oh, my God, he's lost it. Right. He's lost it at this point. And so um, Catherine Baranski, you know, is supposed to come up with like a knife and whatnot. And Heather Graham's character fights her off right. and then comes up with her with her beheaded head. Right. Literally, and he's all like freaked out and whatnot. And but the thing is, is that of course the final shot of it. Oh, by the way, uh, one of the earlier things with with Bowfinger's character that he always wanted was a FedEx truck uh, to come with a new movie script for him to actually do. Right. Um, so I the but the big thing with this is that he has to say "Gotcha, suckers," you know, uh, at the observatory to get the movie poster and the shot that they actually want. Right. But it never happened. 
at this point, somebody had actually caught on that they were basically fucking with Kit Ramsey at this mm-hmm. point. Actually, like and, following him, and and, and they, <laughs> they come up to him, and he's all like, he's all like, the film production for this is only going to be released in Iraq and Madagascar, which does not follow American copyright laws. <laughs> it's like, it's all like, you would know that <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Those two countries is where you're going to be releasing those at. <laughs> <laughs> but so it looked like production is canceled totally mm-hmm. completely. But they had a lot of unused footage that they decided to shoot as they continued to follow around Kit Ramsey before them. Right. And they actually found something that was a little bit interesting, which is, of course, they caught him on film flashing Laker girls. The callback you know? to an earlier joke, which I it's a great, it's a great joke, but, but they literally get it on camera. But not only that, but what happens is he flashes the Laker girls. All the Laker girls start laughing at him. Mm-hmm. And... Eddie Murphy, this is ad libbed, I know for sure. He says, Not funny. <laughs> he start, just starts walking. Start walking off like just real fast. <laughs> um, of course, uh Terrence Stamp uh, Stamp's character is like, you know, this is just like blackmail, right? And and Bowfinger just basically plays and he's like, Oh, it could be blackmail, but then pretty much his career's over after this is just randomly leaked somewhere, don't right. you think? And so and so, of course, he gets. He, so, what he gets do you? Those. So, so what do you guys? You guys over here at the mind f- head, head think? What you do about it? So, uh, they they use uh, they basically use the footage. They get the shot that they're looking for. By the way, that shot was a shot for shot replica of Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, Romeo and Juliet. That's the final shot. Yeah, in, in, in that. Just without the rain. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, they basically get it. And a FedEx delivery truck comes around, you know, with a new uh, with a with a new script for the Bowfinger crew, which uh, oh did, oh uh, what, what was the name of that movie? Do you remember? Well, before we get to that, so so Bo, so Chubby Rain actually premieres, and, it, and it's apparently it's a hit. Well, yeah, uh, uh, we do see that Jif and Kid have, I guess, rekindled a relationship, and you know, they're, at least they attended the premiere together. together you know, right. And uh, I believe Jim works for the pizza place, I believe, or something. Yeah. Something along those lines. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, as that happens and, and you get that final shot of the gotcha suckers line, everybody's going crazy about it. Then we get back to uh, uh, them awaiting that, that special fetish package. It is for a movie called Fake Purse Ninjas. Ninjas. Which, starring Jeff Ramsey. Right. And actually Bowfinger. Bowfinger himself. Because Bowfinger actually uh, throws himself into this movie. And the action, it just <laughs> was laughable at best. Yes. When 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 these two dudes are all, yeah, yeah. And when they get to the little edge, like, you expect them to flip over. No, they just, they, they just kind of take their slow-ass time coming down and whatnot. <laughs> Great. Um, and that's how Bowfinger ends. That's Bowfinger. Um, I cannot think of a better way to really, to really wrap this movie up. Like, this movie is tight. It is. I can't think of what I wouldn't have used for this movie. Um, there, there. In, in my eyes, there really isn't. Like, like there was a vision for this movie. They, it was very narrow and mm-hmm. it was very concrete. Mm-hmm. Um, and Oz knocks it out. It knocks it out the park with this. The problem was, was like, was I, I almost kind of want to say the timing a little bit. Why this movie wasn't a bigger hit than it actually was. Yeah, uh, you want to say the timing? I know it, for Eddie Murphy, it comes right after life. Uh, for Steve Martin, it comes after what? What, what, what else did he come out with? Well, that I, during that time, there wasn't a lot that Martin was working on. Right. Um, because he did have Beethoven uh, right around, it, it, right smack dab in the 90s. Um, he, I mean, this is really like after, I don't want to say after Martin's prime, because his prime did last a, a long time, but... He wouldn't really get good work until what? Cheaper by the dozen? Yeah. Oh three. And then Pink Panther after that. You know, so this was this was really well, after and, you know yeah, uh, Pink Panther had a sequel, Cheaper by the Dozen didn't. I mean I mean what else did, did he really do? Oh no, Cheaper by the Dozen did have a sequel actually. He he did have a uh, um Father of the Bride too. Mm-hmm. And he also had um uh the Out of Towners. Right, which was a flop. It, it just it wasn't that good. Right. Um, he didn't really have anything until bringing down the house, which is slept on. 
Very yeah, much so. Yeah. I really enjoy the book. It, it's 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 weird, but yeah, it's <laughs> I fine. really enjoy it. I, I honestly really do enjoy it. Uh, all right, so let, let's get into some uh, some takeaways here. Who's gonna give that guy a word? It's really it's tough. gotta be hard. This has to be hard. This is this is definitely. I I kind of want to cheat and just give it to both Martin and Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. I think I am going to give it to Eddie Murphy just a little bit more because mm-hmm. he literally has to play two different characters mm-hmm. to a comedic value and he nails it almost immediately mm-hmm. with Kit with the opening scene no problem conspiracy theory weird Ted Kennedy you know is 1 16th black you know, <laughs> right. you know um, and then he nails it also <laughs> that is different <laughs> That light, light. that light, that light kills me because it's so, it's so much better today than it was back in Dunny. <laughs> it's not like the other kid. He's just look at him. He's different. <laughs> <laughs> like a back inch, I prove his point. <laughs> um, and then he plays it perfectly with Kit as as somebody that you could, even though they look alike, you could not imagine this being the brother of of this uh, hot Kit shot action star. Yeah. Jif was just so awkward and weird, but funny in his own ways and sweet and innocent, which mm. is something we are really not used to with Murphy. Right. I mean, sure. You know, Nutty Professor was right was around that time also, but like this was in my eyes, like like Jif was almost the introduction of like that sweet innocence and, and kind of those child movies that he would later do. Right. Uh, you know, they were kind of whatever. But yep. but I think I am gonna give it to Eddie. Okay. Just, uh, just just because. But a lot of credit goes to Martin because he is fantastic in it also. Most definitely. Uh that chick work. Uh I kind of have to give it to Heather Graham. Mm-hmm. A Bransky did a good job also, but she was but but she kind of played her role like one note, you know. Uh, like she often does in, in in a lot of projects, which is fine, but but at least Heather Graham was was at least she was opportunistic. At the oh, yeah. end of the day, mm-hmm. and it's just kind of funny that this is like a whole play on on a on an actual real person. Uh, this is full of work. Hmm. There's not. To be honest, I don't. I don't really think there's a fool. Maybe Kit Ramsey in some ways for believing all of this stuff and laying it get to your head and flashing Laker girls. Mm-hmm. But that's but that's also giving it to Eddie Murphy as being funny as well. Um, I don't really think I could really give it. To to anybody because even Jamie Kennedy, who I usually don't really like, like he was fine in this. Oh, he, he, he's know? he's enjoyable he, for sure. He's cool. He's he's left to a minimum, but at the same time, he's he's rather. Enjoyable. But that's about that's about how much you you need him there. You can't give it to Terrence Stamp because you sure the character uh, the character you know is manipulative, but it's not that bad. Maybe Robert Downey, but that I mean I mean it's it's too weak to be considered the fool, right? Yeah, um, so I'm not. I don't think there's a fool in this one. Okay, yeah. uh, cut that out. Nothing. It's 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 a really tight hour and forty minute movie mm-hmm. that that you know by the time it's over you're like oh wow that that was really good. Right. Uh, I kind of see. It's definitely the uh, I-10 highway scene. You know, <laughs> with, with with Jeff. Okay. It's, it's so classic because. Because there, there's a lot of different forms of of comedy, obviously. It was, it was a trailer you know, shot as well, wasn't it? It was. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, there's a lot of different forms of comedy. Some of that comedy is going to be, you know, from something that somebody says. Some of it is just by the acting that somebody does. Because you know, as an audience viewer, you know that there's not actual cars driving by. Although, let's give credit, like the digital art of what it looks like is good. So that's just good acting to make me laugh, to believe that he's actually going to get hit by a car. And to believe that he's that afraid he's going to be hit by a car. It's That's why it's so <laughs> great. You know the cars aren't there, but you can't stop laughing at this obviously petrified Eddie Murphy, you know, crossing the highway. And he has to do this twice. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It makes you wonder, like, did he have to run back over there to run back? Well, how did he get there in the first place? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought about that. Yeah. Oh. So did a four? T- fuck that. No way. No way. I because refuse. there's not a place for them to pull over on that side. No. If, if, no, because if, if, if that's the ten area that we think it is, that's you're hugging a wall. If that's the area I think it is, the nearest exit <laughs> is. 
I'm guessing somewhere in Culver City. Yeah. If it's Sony, it's, it's somewhere in Culver City easily. Which means it's not an exit for a good two, three miles. I know. Ah, fuck that. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm good on that. All right, partner. Who's the game you that guy award? That guy award will easily go to Eddie Murphy playing the dual characters as both Kit and Jeff. Uh, this was the first time, though we are used to seeing Eddie playing those multiple character roles, this was the first time that it required minimal makeup, and it's definitely Eddie in all his Eddie fashion. Right. Um, like I said, with the clumps, it's Eddie in a bunch of fucking makeup. Though it's still genius, but it's just, he's also got that extra oomph because he's in a bunch of makeup. Right. Whereas in this, slap some fake braces on him, give him a little bit of a hairpiece, that's Eddie Murphy's story. Right. You know, so for that, uh, and, and the fact that he... <laughs> <laughs> Steve Martin's like, when Steve Martin's like, uh, would you be willing to cut your hair? He's like, oh man, like, yeah, yeah but, can, but but can somebody else do it? Like, <clears throat> I've had a couple of hacks. I've had a few <laughs> like, accidents. Like, 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 did you not understand the question? He just means change it. Um, like, like, are you willing to cut it? Like, are you willing to cut it? All right. Oh man, just somebody else do it, please. But uh, <laughs> but the fact that he dev- he takes these two characters and literally make them different people. Yeah. You know, knowing the fact that you know the the one thing that does make them connect is that they are brothers. Besides that, though, Kit and Jeff are two totally different people. So right. that's why I do love Eddie. Eddie's definitely that that guy. I work for that. That chick award. That chick award. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Heather Graham as well. I was gonna give it to Baranski, but she doesn't fucking listen. Like you were told to leave that man alone, and even in the one scene where she couldn't avoid, just she had to talk to him, right? And almost really kind of ruined it. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but uh, I give it to Heather Graham because uh, even when she was made aware that this is definitely something that he does not know he's in, she was ride or die. She was ride or die for it, mm-hmm. even if that means fucking half the set. But whatever. <laughs> mm. You know that shit continued too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. <laughs> I actually love that scene between him and uh, uh, her and uh, Steve Martin, where she's all like, "He's all like, it's over." Why? Because you had sex, had sex with Jeff. So, wow, I didn't really think about that that way. I'll see you tonight, 8 p.m. Yep, yeah. <laughs> <good>. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, this full award. This full award. Uh, I I struggled with this because I was going to give it to Terrence Stamp, uh, but he. I can't blame him for this. That's just what he does. He runs this weird psychedelic group. Right. And it should be called Mindfuck, but for PG-13 purposes, it's called Mindhead. It right. Fine. Uh, I'm going to give it to Robert Downey Jr.'s character. Yeah. He, he, he plays too minimal of a role. It's a minimal role, one. And then two, I'm not a big Hollywood producer, but I do know most pitch meetings aren't that quick. Right. And I also know that, I'm obviously, you play it for movies, and I get that, but... To read the first page and a half, shoot to the end, got to suck his oh, awesome saw poster. You have no fucking clue what you're reading, by the way. You no, just not at all. thought it sounded cool. And he mentioned Kate Ramsey's name. Right. Uh, so for that, even though what came out of that was, you know, a hit movie, but at the same time, you, you really get this no So part. really, is he a genius then? No. Still <laughs> full about it. Fair because Because this movie could have definitely went another direction. Uh, cut that out. Cut that out. I'm with you. I really can't cut nothing from this movie. This movie is air tight. Uh, even on the scenes where there's no Eddie, it's strictly just Steve. If Steve carries the movie by himself, no problem. Right. Um, nah, I really I really can't cut anything up. I actually thought about maybe the undocumented immigrants, you know, stuff. Because I, I wonder if that was like a scene that, it's funny, don't get me wrong, it doesn't really add anything, it's just made to be funny, to be funny. I would say the same thing, but at the same time, it, it, it makes you wonder, well, how are you going to shoot this? You have no crew. Right. I, I think it also would have been just funny if they just showed like if they just like deadpan and just showed the three Mexican guys like mm-hmm. afterwards and just like oh okay like that so that's I, how you shoot this gotcha. right right okay. like like that would have been funny as well right. but but it's fine you know the whole shooting and get people into a van and I'm like sitting there I'm like I'm like man that that that's probably a lot more accurate than people think it is and that joke probably <laughs> wouldn't work today no <laughs> it probably no. wouldn't work today. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I I I I, uh, I really can't cut anything out. This movie is airtight and it, it's it's fantastic for me. Uh, iconic scene. Iconic scene. This is where I struggle because I'm with you. I want to take that freeway scene so bad, but oh, you can't. You can't uh, take it away from that. I, 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 what's better than that scene? Uh, there isn't. There isn't. A, honestly, I really cannot think of another scene that's number one that effective. 
Because the scene itself is what, about a minute and a half long? Yeah. So something that's that effective and that funny in such a short period of time, you know? And, and, and it's really based off of the emotion because I love when, like, when he goes, um, uh, you're going to run across to me, da da da. Those things kind of strange, da da da. And the very next shot is as camera's panning up and you get this unbelievably scared <laughs> shitless face. He is nervous. I he does not want to do this. I don't know how the how Frank Oz was not laughing the minute he started seeing the, the I mean, I've never seen Eddie play it to boy like he is so nervous. He does not want to do this. Uh so yeah, I I I'm gonna join you. Uh, the, the ten freeway uh run across the freeway thing is hilarious, <laughs> man. That's probably one of my favorite if not my favorite scene in this, in this entire movie. Uh all right, so let's get into some uh some quick hits here. So you can wrap this puppy up. So quick hits. Uh, based on a real incident in 1927, a Russian right. filmmaker uh, covertly shot footage of the vacationing Mary Pickford and fashioned an entire film around the footage, creating the illusion that Pickford was actually starring in this Russian film. Clever. Can you get sued for that now? Uh, yeah, I'm but, pretty sure you could. But, but in Russia, who cares? In who, Russia, who, Russia sues you. Who gives a shit? Uh, the character of Daisy, played by Heather Graham, is a thinly veiled jab at Anne Heche. Heche, sorry. Uh, like Daisy, Heche is from Ohio, and also like Daisy, Heche was briefly r- romantically involved with a significantly older man, Steve Martin. Daisy's last lines about being involved with the most powerful lesbian in Hollywood are a reference to Heche's relationship at the time with Ellen DeGeneres. Right. Uh, <laughs> The company could only get Eddie Murphy for a brief six-week window to shoot his role in the movie. He was in between shooting Life and The Professor 2, The Clumps, and had just a brief time in his busy schedule to work on this project. So glad he did, though. Yeah. That was a really good six weeks of work. Oh, yeah. You're good out here. Uh, Gary Coleman worked on, set as a, worked on the set as a security guard. Solid. Yep. <laughs> um, this The original role for Eddie Murphy was supposed to be Keanu. Which is why that, like, whoa, like, you know, like, like Jif's character mm-hmm. probably would have been closer to to Keanu Reeves than Kit's character, eh, than Kit's character on the other side. Mm. So it would have been more of a challenge on the other side. But, but uh, I remember something about that, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry, that would have been really bad casting. Yeah, I, I like Eddie, been. Eddie, Eddie was just classic. Yeah. Uh, the movie's original title was Both Fingers, Big Thing. It's better just both fingers. Just both fingers. Well, that's fine. Um, uh, Eddie Murphy agreed to star in the film because he was a fan of Steve Martin and always wanted to work with him. Yep. Very well put. Very, very, very well thought out and got them two guys together. That's an SNL alum right there. So both of them. Yep. Um, let me see here. Uh, let me, let's, let's do two more. Um, oh, the Eddie Murphy part was actually written for Keanu Reeves. Yep. Okay. Just got that one out of nowhere. Uh, the, the L.A. freeway was shut down for two days for the sequence where Jif runs across the freeway. Two days? Two days. So the dark side Two drivers. days in 99? On the 10 in 99. Oh, my God. Imagine the... God. Ooh, God. No. For a minute and a half scene? No minute. wonder why people don't like it. People were pissed about that scene. I'd be pissed. The 10... <laughs> when, when I lived in California, the 10 was right by my apartment. Mm-hmm. In West Covina. Well, you know, the 10 goes through LA yeah, right, yeah, for sure. Like, it so, it. It, you know, it, it takes you from downtown straight to the beach. So we're right. talking, you're covering a lot of land in that little time frame. That's, that, that's crazy. Where did it close off at? If I can, yeah. if I can guess, I want to say it, it, it likely closed off at, say, like Culver Boulevard headed west toward the beach. So yeah, I would say it's, it's definitely 10 lanes. Yeah, so I would say apart from like Cobra Boulevard down to like maybe... Oh, that's maybe awful. Push. Ocean? Probably? That's a guess, though. That's bad. That's bad. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, when Bobby shows Kit the script, Kit says he is not an... Okay, here we go. When Bobby shows Kit the script, Kit says he he is not a he's not, damn. I can't get it up. When Bobby shows Kit the script, Kit says he is not expecting a script from Paramount, but maybe Universal. In real life, Eddie Murphy's movies in the 1980s and early 1990s were produced by Paramount, but his later movies, including this film, have been produced by Universal. There you go. So that's a little jab yeah. at Paramount, even though he's going back to Paramount for right. a couple to America too. But that is Bowfinger. Um, Underrated if you haven't seen it criminally underrated if you ever seen it. a movie that 
I can be honest, has aged gracefully. It really has. 20 years yeah. later, like, I'm still laughing a little too hard at some of the, that Ted, that Ted Kennedy joke just really gets me. Right. <laughs> uh, man, and just, just certain things like, uh, uh, the way that it plays off of this fear, like you may, maybe you are being followed, but you're not being followed. Right. But you all sitting in Hollywood, so almost you can't believe nothing the, you see, you know? The conspiracy theory stuff, obviously, that, mm-hmm. that is out there. Uh, also, uh, uh, kind of how satire really works in like a movie and how, and how, you know, we, we kind of like giggle and, and chuckle because we are those, you know, like Hobo with a shotgun right. is basically a satire of, a lot of things, death proof also, and, right. and you know all those. So it's funny because this movie was before their time, mm-hmm. but would still really fit well in twenty years later. Most definitely, most definitely, it definitely would be one of the better comedies this year. Uh, it got released. It's almost like you want to see a sequel, but what the hell would it be about? You can't, you can't do a sequel. There's no way you can do a sequel. Yeah, man. Uh, I love this movie. This movie's awesome. Yeah, it is. Uh, let people know where they can find you. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, David Danger Neff. Uh, I'm the co-host here at Back to the Classics. Uh, we technically still have a movie review show, but that's that's kind of down in the books. Um, we are going to have some, we are going to have some exciting news uh, coming up uh, for those of you who are interested in getting into the podcasting world. A um, lot of uh, new and exciting opportunities that we would like to present uh, to you guys. So please uh, keep a lookout for some of that news. Uh, we will be sharing that information uh, hopefully by next episode. So we'll see. Sweet, 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 sweet. And my guy, Jay Alonzo, where can they find you? You can find me on all the social media simply at I am Jay Alonzo. That's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Of course, the Back to the Classics Facebook page is up and popping. Go ahead and jump on in there and join the conversation. Uh, don't forget to follow us right here on Instagram, uh, BTTC Podcast, on both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, like Dave said, we got some stuff coming up, man. Definitely check in with us. And, uh, as you can see, we're, we're, we're still keeping it consistent. No weird days off, nothing like that. But, uh, you know, we, we love what we do. We love you for listening. Uh, next week. What's we got going on here next week? What do we have going on? We got, we got a really cool idea that, uh, is also coming up. But next week's also a super throwback. Something that you wanted to do for quite some time. Yeah, it's it's time. Is it, is it's it time? time? Yeah, it's it's time to go. Is it time to revisit that that day when I went and saw that shit? Oh my god! god I've literally it. seen I've literally seen it the one time since that since the night I seen it in theaters. But I was twelve. Like, I'm I'm not going to say that's aged well. I'll be honest. I I'm quite sure it hasn't. But the fighting is still top notch. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what it is. You'll find out next week. With that being said, this is Back to the Classics. We love you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for always hanging out with us. I am Jay Lonzo. With me, of course, is David Danger Now. We'll see y'all next week, y'all. Peace. Peace.